The God of the Bible, which is actually not the God of the universe, is a entity, actually several entities, to be honest with you, because it's more than one God in the Bible. They use the word God singular, but that's a mistranslation. It's actually gods with an S. They slip up a couple times and say gods in the Bible with an S. But when they're trying to identify the monotheistic version of God, they always take the S off. When in true reality, when the ancient text, you find that there was the S was there. What Billy Carson refers to is the use of the term Elohim in the Bible. Elohim is a Hebrew word that, while often translated as God, is actually plural, meaning gods. This raises the possibility that ancient texts may not have been referring to a singular deity, but rather multiple divine beings or entities. Interestingly, older Sumerian tablets tell a similar story, but explicitly mention multiple entities involved in creation. But does it mean that there is no God at all? Let's find out what Billy says about that. There is a creator of the universe. There is a divine love that exists that permeates the entire universe. But the one written about in that book is not it. So at least you can have solace in knowing that there is a creator. There is a divine energy that flows through everything and in, in, in every atom in, in the entire universe. That's based on science. We are living in a creation that's based on real science. What I'm telling you is in that book, that's not the one who did it. That's not the one who did it. Not even close. Even they said themselves, and I do mean they, that the creator of all will punish them for what they did here on this planet. That's in the Sumerian tablets. They said the creator of all will punish them for what they did. They even know they have a reckoning in themselves. They never called God a him or a he. Won't he do it? They never said, they never said him or he. They called it the creator of all. And where else does that show up? In the Emerald Tablets. Thoth never called himself a god. He never told people to pray to him. He's one of the very few that did not masquerade as a god, although he could have. When he left the different regions of the earth, the people there who were left behind eventually deified him because that's what people do. We do dumb stuff. We start saying, it was this guy, this guy was God. No, he wasn't. As a matter of fact, there's a verse here where people start groveling at his feet. And he says, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Calm down. <laughs> I'm a son of Atlantis. I'm here to help you. He didn't say, yes, grovel at my feet. I am your Lord God. You pray to me. You blah, 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 blah. He didn't do that. Now, some of these people, his relatives, his uncle did that. His uncle made people pray to him. His cousin made people pray to him. His brother, Amin Ra, made people say amen after every prayer. And they were at odds. Him and his brother were at odds with each other. They always fought. They had battles. And thought me, also known as E.I. Enki, said, Thoth, you go to, go to the other side of the planet, man. Start something over there. And Thoth took some African Olmecs with him to Mesoamerica and kickstarted the whole Teotihuacan civilization. What does Teotihuacan mean? Translate to the city of Thoth. That's why the pyramid there, the pyramid of the sun is the same exact dimensions of the base of the great pyramid at Giza. The alignment is the same alignment with Orion at the great pyramid and the other two pyramids that are sitting there on the Giza plateau. Both pyramids are built on top of aquifers and the pyramid of the sun, which is the larger pyramid at Teotihuacan is exactly 50% the height of the pyramid uh, at Giza, the Great Pyramid at Giza. It's the same, same architect, same exact architect. His name is Thoth. He went there with Africans from uh, Africa and built the Teotihuacan civilization. They extended all throughout Mesoamerica, all down into Tulum, down in through the jungle, into the Yucatan Peninsula, down into Chichen Itza. All of that was built. The Mayans built nothing. And they admit they built nothing in their own records. They will teach you this when you go study archaeology and ancient civilizations in college. The Mayans built absolutely nothing. They had no knowledge. They inherited what was already there. The Aztecs who came hundred, a couple hundred years after the Mayans also inherited what was there. The Aztecs were uh, in a in a um, another part of Mesoamerica where they uh, they were living in a valley. That that valley had a volcanic eruption. The mountain behind it was a volcano. It was active. It erupted. It destroyed everything. Some of them died. 
they had to go find a new place to live. As they journeyed through the jungle, they stumbled upon Teotihuacan. And guess what? They moved right on in. Again, they built nothing. They built nothing. It was already there. Up until cer certain parts of the dynastic, like the later dynastic era of Egypt, they built nothing. Now, some of the parts like Karnak and Luxor, which are a lot newer, yes, they had their hand in that. Clearly, you can see not super megalithic structures. Clearly, you can see blocks put into blocks cut and then stacked on top of each other in different ways. Some of the knowledge had been lost. The super ancient, super megalithic structures that were built were coming out of Kemet long before the dynastic era even happened. So we're talking about a super ancient culture and a super ancient race of people that encompassed the whole planet. They went around the entire planet, pole to pole, creating and building civilizations everywhere with megalithic structures that were very similar in style and size. And over time, their knowledge had become lost. And whoever was around moved in and inherited what was already there. All right? That's how it got there. What Billy Carson highlights here is the lost history and the new discoveries proving that an advanced global civilization once existed on Earth. The knowledge they left behind has been hidden, altered, and used to manipulate the masses for centuries. As we uncover these truths, we begin to see how much of what we've been taught has been distorted. But where does that leave us in our search for the real creator, the true source of divine energy? Let's find out as Billy explains how to find the real God. Become your own person. Become your own researcher. Start asking questions. Ask yourself questions. Look at information that contradicts itself and start trying to figure out why is it contradicting and then use some basic logic and you'll figure out what's being told to you is not exactly what happened. What's being taught to you to believe in wholeheartedly for eternity is not even coming from the word of the creator of the universe itself. It's coming from human beings, from men. Actual flesh and blood men that put their pants on one leg at a time, just like you. All you need to know is this, and I'm gonna end. The divine spark that created everything in the entire universe is inside of every atom in your body. Meaning that you are God and God is you. You are the divine walking in the flesh already to experience life like it is in the third dimension as you. There are still many hidden truths waiting to be revealed. If the Old Testament was copied and altered from ancient texts to control the masses, could the same manipulation have occurred in more recent history, shaping our understanding of reality? The undeniable wisdom found in these ancient scripts was meant to guide humanity. And one of the most profound truths given to us was the teachings of Jesus. But over time, these teachings were intentionally changed by those seeking power. To uncover how this manipulation has impacted us, make sure to watch this video next, where Billy Carson explains exactly how these deceptions were crafted.